Hello and welcome to newsclick.in. We're in the studio in New Delhi. I'm joined today on my right by Gautam Navlakha, a journalist, activist, commentator. And on my left, Zai, who's a, a policy researcher. And on Skype from Bangalore is Sharada Ugra, a journalist with ESPN Click Info. We're talking in the context of the BCCI's central contracts list, which came out a couple of days ago. And it's been uh, the topic of much conversation in, in at least cricketing circles in India for the past couple of days. Uh, yesterday in an interview, Smriti Mandana, who is the ICC Women's Cricketer of the Year, uh, came out and said that the issue of pay parity between men and women in cricket is not an issue. That's essentially what we're talking about. Uh, we're going to go across to Sharda first for essentially a background on what happens, how much the women get paid, uh, how much the men get paid, and why this is an issue that essentially we felt the need to burning need to discuss today. Uh, so much so that we grabbed her straight as, as soon as she got off her flight. Uh, Sharda, can you set it up for us, please? Okay, I'll just go with it. Um, the entire issue sort of got kicked in once again into public notice because of the statements that were made before the Indian women left for the World T20. Uh, Smriti Mandana, Armand Preet Kaur said, you know, no, no, we can't earn as much as the men earn. Um, what happens at this point is that uh, the Indian women have only just been given contracts, say, for the last six years. It came into place, I think, 2013, if I'm not wrong, 2013, 2014. Over 2015. Previously, there was no question. Uh, could have been, I, uh, it was, yeah, possibly 2015. I'm sorry. They, it came into play in 2015 in the middle of this whole uh, IPL scandal because suddenly they discovered it was really bad that women are not on contract at all. And... Um, uh, the problem that exists at this point is that, uh, you know, neither me, the men cricketers nor the women realize the power of collective bargaining. Uh, the Australian women cricketers are paid more than any other women cricketers in the world. They earn about 165,000 Australian dollars approximately. Uh, the, uh, the Indian women earn at the moment the, the top flight women. We're talking about, say, uh, not even 24, you know, it's a much smaller number. Uh, that earn around say 75, 76,000 US dollars in uh, going by uh, the top women's contract is uh, 50 lakhs and then the men's uh, lowest contract is I think it's a one crore, crore. If I thought. one crore yeah and the problem is that it's not these this level where it where it matters it matters where you're looking at the first class uh, um, in first class cricket where everybody you know the numbers are larger. Uh, they don't have first class uh, contracts, even for the men. They aren't uh, at the state level. Never mind the women earn, I think, a couple of thousand rupees, 2,500, 5,000 rupees, you know, that kind of sum. And in a, in a cricket board that is so profitable and so huge, uh, you should be able to do everything to get more and more women to play, to make the game more viable for people to come in and, and to want to play. Um, Australia, which is like a path breaker in the sense of women's uh, uh, cricket, uh, they uh, they they want to make sure that their women, if they win the World T20, will get exactly the same amount of prize money that the men will get, uh, who win the World T20. So that they'll put in the cricket board will put in about six hundred thousand dollars if the women win it. Um, you know, so, so 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 the Australians have made uh, the Australian men and women belong to a cricketers' association that pushes for this kind of thing. That's you know, and in India, even the men's cricket cricketers' association that has been formed is kind of fighting for attention at this point in time. They're saying, you know, nobody's calling us, nobody's having meetings. So a lot of the time in cricket, the money is sort of hand out. It's like largesse. And the women are sort of facing the end of it. But I think at this point, the, the top players are so grateful that they're getting any kind of, you know, decent money that they say, listen, let's not get into this. And, you know, we have to make money. You don't have to make money. The board has to find a way to make money for your game. So, and is it, in that sense, maybe it's a little bit unfair to also ask current players who are... Absolutely involved in and earning whatever living they're earning through the establishment. Perhaps it's unfair to sort of focus these questions to them so much. Hmm. And that's why we are perhaps able to have a, a conversation hmm. about hmm. these issues uh, in a more uh, balanced manner than uh, Smithy or any of these current cricketers are able to. Uh, from a policy point of view, Zai, how, why should... Uh, the argument that has been put forward is that women's cricket doesn't bring in the revenue mm -hmm. and therefore it's okay for us to make less money than the men. Look at how big, how many people watch, how many sponsorship, blah, blah, blah. Uh, why is that from a policy point of view 
not perhaps the best argument to make yeah uh, one of the questions i would ask is what can the women players even do to increase revenue is there <coughs> a special way of playing that brings you know more mm-hmm. uh, people to the games uh, there's nothing they can realistically do to increase their revenue except for you know playing well which they are doing already so um it is the job of the bcci to bring in the money and also the bcci has to have the incentive to um, market these games to uh, get the women to play more uh, games in a year for example or to bring in the sponsors to sell the tickets so um if the women aren't even paid at a level that the men are being paid at the board itself has no incentive to market these games so um i don't think the players have that incentive you know the when we talk about parity hmm. between women and men cricketers uh when we talk about parity we are talking about look at the existing situation of course it's a it's a welcome thing that in october 2015 for whatever reason bcci felt compelled to start Uh, offering central contracts to women mm. but having started that it's important now to take a look at the 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 level of difference between say a plus uh, amongst men who get 7 crores and uh, for grade a for women players who get 50 lakhs i mean it's a difference which is 14 times mm. now is that is that realistic is that fair nobody nobody is starting to say well women cr- cricketers should also get 7 crores not right away but definitely there is an argument that can be made and is reasonable to suggest that it there cannot be such a huge gap between men and female that's one part of it the second mm-hmm. is how many women finally end up getting the contracts in contrast to men Ah oh, that's another question i have in mind how many do they get it i think in the first round the 11 women got contracts is that right sharda yeah yeah it's not a, it's not a big number i has just gone up to uh, you know it was literally the first round it was would have been you know just about the main team give or take a few players here and there and now the number has gone up but not not by much yeah it's around 19 i think if yeah, i'm not wrong yeah. 19 yeah, so it's yeah. a very small number that one is talking about right. so it may it's not just a question of uh, the quantum that each person gets the you know the can contract the question is also how many how many women are given these central contract the second question i have in mind and i think it's related to well central contract is a very important thing and it's a welcome change at least we have started but what about domestic tournament what about this role of the state associations in promoting women's cricket mm. and widening the network you know the so that you get more women interested in the game more women play so more people come out to watch and there is a uh, t- local t- domestic tournament i mean in england i'm uh, sharda you you can help us in england and australia and new zealand have a very robust domestic tournament system is it not do we have something anything comparable there is there is something that has been set up which is sort of literally the basic starting point framework for women's cricket say a couple of years ago it's not even older than that uh, uh, but it's in australia it's the women's big bash league that has created this massive interest in women's cricket uh, with kids and the, you know the crowds are good which is where they've managed to get television right from it package now the whole thing is oh we can't have a women's ipl because it's not easy to do you know because uh, do we have that many players so all the all the questioning is on the ability of the players rather than the inventiveness of the organization that owns uh, owns cricket as such you know which is this it is almost like a classic uh, indian sport scenario you'll see it everywhere across all sport there aren't enough tournaments for but for for you know aspiring young athletes to play and similarly with with women's cricket the men's game is super is superbly managed May, uh, you know men's cricket has 2000 matches a year 2000 Uh, from senior to junior level it's a mental figure and it's organized like a military operation is done beautifully but the women's matches will literally be a handful of like 20 or something i mean i could be getting the number wrong but it's all that because that is that is literally thinking out of the box and doing a little bit more work and changing the way you look at uh, women's cricket to start with you know women's cricket was seen as is this uh, abandoned until they had they were forced to take uh, bcc was forced to take it uh, take game under its wing the women's game this is a question to everyone uh, and mm. it's from the point of view of let's say i'm the bcci 
I'm organizing or my job is to look at how to make this sport which conversations are happening like has cricket reached a saturation point in terms of its audience and the people that are playing etc etc right uh, perhaps it might be pertinent to look at 50% of human population as a possible both Correct. player base as well as an audience to consume it perhaps it's also possible to say that okay uh, it's cheaper to organize matches for women because you are not paying them enough because uh, as much uh, it's you don't require billion dollar sponsorships you can sell cheaper tickets thereby bringing more people into the stadium uh, isn't it in the benefit or, or like for administrators of the sport doesn't it work well to encourage uh, w the women side of the game yeah assuming that in the bcc at the moment there are administrators there that want to work for the women's game at the moment people in the bcc are just fighting for territory and kind of they finally got it back after the court had it and all that so the women's game is literally last on their mind uh, but like you're saying it is it is a very it is a you know you raise an interesting argument about this we don't have to spend that uh, much money the bcci has more money than it can actually spend or throw away it is just enormously successful on the back of the men's game and uh, so doing this for women's cricket will actually meaning to go out and make sure it's it's literally like women's cricket and uh, you know the new teams from the northeast are, are sort of looked at in the same way that are we have to have them so they are there you know so you have to work in a way that you need to then train coaches you need to make sure that you go out and that there are grounds that the girls can play in and push the women's game uh, we had asked rahul dravid about uh, you know what was his wish list on, on the espn website and one of the the first thing he said was more more uh, uh, more uh, involvement in the grassroots for the women's game so that is what has to be done then you got to go out and proselytize the game amongst girls in this country you know you have to do it in a, in an active way you have to do it with a way of and build a proper structure of tournaments uh, which at the moment somebody said is if railways just comes and beats everybody then you know railways and air india are the two big teams but all the state associations have to create their own teams and their own district competitions and have coaches go down there it's literally like you're literally trying to uh, make cricket grow all over again in 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 some parts of even in in this particular demographic and so on you know we have different models that we can choose from now in england if i understand the women's domestic cricket scene is non professional it's amateur okay yet they have been able to maintain quite a robust system perhaps not as robust as australia or new zealand because they have a much better pay scale and things like that but nevertheless it has now we can choose bcci has two models to choose from either it believes in revenue generating model where again it does pay in the long run to invest in something to allow it to grow and develop and you have to invest and bcci has yeah. if it doesn't want to look at the revenue model then it has other model to walk, fall back on where it can use its coffers to create a very sound domestic women's cricket through tournaments by through outreach in schools etc 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 exactly the manner in which they have tried to promote cricket for for men okay at various levels the same thing can be duplicated the point i'm raising is in is because there's too much of focus on revenue that it must generate revenue people must come it must be marketed mm. i mean the game didn't begin as a marketing proposition the game was played because it was something very enjoyable people like playing it it had positive fallouts etc now maybe we have to go back to that in order to yeah. to to probably introduce changes the best changes possible under the circumstance i mean that's how off hand i can think of that's no no i'm saying what gautam is saying is amazing we are constantly thinking that yeah, the game has to produce money no money, money is a part of the game the game doesn't exist to make money exactly. you know money just exists to make, just to keep the game uh, to grow the game so thank you thank you for that yeah and so don't think they are mutually exclusive also necessarily mm. because even for young girls uh, in schools to want to play cricket it helps to see those star players doing really well in their lives mm. and for the game to be so big that people are watching it so you have to do both these things simultaneously i suppose well that's what they have in england they have a, it's not as if they don't have any professionals mm. but it comes at a much later stage mm. rather than so it allows also people to play the game mm. for the sheer pleasure of playing the game mm. somewhere market and revenue mm. 
have taken over our decisions, you know. So that's that's rather sad. यहाँ तक कि जब जैसे हम मैगजीन में काम करते थे वहाँ पे एक नया जर्जी लॉन्च जो दिज अ ग्लोबल अपैरल मेजर दैट स्पॉन्सर्स द इंडियन क्रिकेट टीम एंड दे वांटेड टू पुट समवन ऑन द कवर बिकॉज दे हैड न्यू शर्ट आउट राइट सो इट वाज अ फाइट ऑन मल्टीपल लेवल्स टू गेट आई थिंक स्मृति इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग वॉज द वन हु फाइनली एन एड अप ऑन द कवर बट आई कुड बी रॉन्ग Uh, but it was a fight to have a, a female face there just showing off a shirt that you're paying money for aapne matlab paise wala argument hi cancel kar diya kyunki aap de rahe hain paise unhi ko de rahe hain paise lekin tab bhi aap waise to aap kahin bhi prachar karna chahte hain lekin sahi hai jab jab aapko magazine ka cover mil raha hai tab nahi kar nahi dalna cha rahe hain kyun i don't know you know having this picture as opposed to just that picture doesn't make it any better or worse hmm. but Anyway, that was a mm. tangent. Uh, in a wider sense, it's a thing that happens across sport, and we had the the FIFA Women's World Cup happened uh, last year. Last year, two thousand nineteen, it was the most widely watched uh, Women's World Cup ever, uh, and this was a like major part of mm-hmm. the conversation. Superstars like. uh Megan Rapino and the Americans are taking the lead and they're fighting in fact against their uh, against US soccer it's a, it's now uh, kya kehte hain class action lawsuit oh because oh. they're representing all women that play the sport you know so it's i assume that uh, level of uh, a suit and they're going against it saying that why should US soccer it's a non-profit whose job it is to run soccer in the country mm-hmm. it's autonomous from the government yes but it's not a, pro- a for profit uh, company right yeah. yeah they are paying the salaries of the men's national team and the women's national team what is the logic of like isn't the isn't equal pay for equal work the the simple logic on correct. which this should be based correct yeah one of the things they're also saying is that it's actually impossible to separate out the revenue generated by the women players and the men players in soccer so you can't actually make the argument that the women generate less revenue than mm-hmm. the men for the other and women's soccer us women's soccer team they're is an extremely good very very yeah. talented and the sheer pleasure of watching them play attracts a lot of eyeballs and lot of crowd so there is but that's thanks to the fact that they've encouraged that sports to grow and mm-hmm. develop mm-hmm. and expand you don't do it you can't expect people to come and watch in fact uh, the norwegian player hildeberg uh, who was voted the best player in the world didn't actually turn up to the world cup mm-hmm. because uh, of this reason it's like until we get that parity i will not play and subsequently sharda is uh, waving she's uh, <laughs> she she needs to go i think is that it sharda you have to get uh, yeah yeah in about say 5 minutes 5 like, minutes no, not even five, okay minutes. we yeah. we uh, we'll also try and Sorry. wrap up in 5 <laughs> minutes only then in the case of cricket it's really odd baki to aap kehte hain ki india is a one sport nation hmm. sirf cricket khelte hain hum sirf cricket jante hain theek hai ओलंपिक डिसिप्लिन अगर आप देखें एथलेटिक्स देख लें बैडमिंटन देख लें कुश्ती देख लें बॉक्सिंग देख लें कहाँ से मेडल्स आ रहे हैं हमारे ओलंपिक ईयर है ना ये यस व्हाट आर द चांसेस वेमेन सो व्हाई इज इट दैट इन अ स्पोर्ट दैट हैज दिस मैसिव मोर मनी देन दे कैन स्पेंड ऑन द वन हैंड एंड ऑन दर लाइक द नेशनल टीम इज बींग ट्रीटेड एट पार विथ रिडिक्यूलस स्पॉट लाइक फुटबॉल how come like the the bcci has all this cash so why is one of its national teams being treated at at par with a, like a non entity like football or athletics or so one of these sports i mean and now uh, you know we'll have to go into about uh, men's sports and women's sports and it's like a wider sociological argument uh, you know the the point is more like uh, you know as in uh, it's it's like yeah too too complex uh, to be talked about in a taxi uh, but um the 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 thing is that at this point in time now it's literally the women's game is ready for take off if you want to energize and re-energize your sport and all the discussions you're having about what kind of your audience is maybe the women's sport is, uh, is the way to do it and we saw what happened at the trend after the 2017 world cup how everybody woke up to the idea that of these fantastic uh, you know women players that we have 
and i mean the stories you heard about the women's team in in the past that they got the men's shirts for the sponsor you know all those kind of things that hope that has changed so let's hope that they are able to then make the base work better than right at the top because in all our sport the elite athletes are now looked after but it's the people at the grassroots who are still basically scrabbling for um you know some kind of respect some kind of opportunity so things like that so maybe this is a time for for them to say okay let's forget how we were and let's be something better you know as megan rapino says be better <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. We 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 let you go here, Shada. Thanks for taking the time. And thank and you I'll, so much. Thank you. And I will track you down soon. Thank you. Thanks. And I'll come to you guys Bye. for closing uh, comments. You your most of your research is in tech. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah. So how does it work in that industry? Uh, it's maybe not a singular industry, but yeah. I would just say that uh, what this highlights is that. pay is a negotiated settlement whether mm. formally or informally and one of the things that smriti mandhana said is that if the crowd comes in everything will fall in place i am not sure that necess- that's necessarily mm. true even if the crowd comes in you will still have to collectively bargain and i think we have to now look at reform of the indian cricketers association to make sure that the players have the ability to collectively bargain with the board and as it mm. works in any industry mm-hmm. collective bargaining and also the silence of the superstars it applies to this scenario as well theek hai aapko politics pe baat nahi karna hai aapko ca nrc pe apna opinion nahi dena hai fellow cricketers yeah but these are cricketing issues exactly. that we were talking about yeah, right yeah. these are your your co mm-hmm. athletes yeah. your compatriots all of that uh why why is why the silence from from the superstars again I don't know why the silence. I mean, this is a question that should be posed to them. Why are you silent? Where your own fellow cricketers, who happen to be women, who are getting, of just now, I mean, the last three, four years, been uh, provided central contracts and all. Uh, why is it that they still lag behind? Why is it that there is no domestic, uh, robust domestic tournament, or a, a reach out where you can, you know, you you catch hold of young. Uh, from the school onwards mm-hmm. as you're trying to do for the juniors in the cricket uh, etc etc so yes absolutely but the the point is if you don't have a proper players association yes. which is willing to even act as a union exactly as the counterparts in australia or elsewhere look at the contrast australia the men cricketers stood by yep. the fellow colleagues mm-hmm. right that is the model we should be following we trying to follow australian cricket methods which uh, we replicate the worst part but we leave out the best parts of uh, australian practices i mean this is strange so the one level is that the players must be organized they must be able to bargain hard not just for themselves but for others and it's the seniors responsibility to do it i think bcci which is sitting i mean the largest coffer that it has and it's supposed to be sharing 26% of its gross uh, revenue with the players which it doesn't do because a large part of that gross revenue which it generates from you know ipl and other uh, lucrative contracts they don't share with the players but they are sitting on a huge uh, pile of money surely if they have the interest of game at heart and they have a long term uh, planning they would think that 50% of the population which is women is what we should be targeting to try and get them also engage involved in in this uh, the only game that this country seems to be playing mm. uh, any degree of you know uh well they do fairly well mm. let's put it that way now if this is the only game we have surely it makes sense for me that bcci should be thinking and looking at women's cricket and its development and its widening far more seriously than it has ever bothered in the past mm. so i think there are multiple things that need to be do Yeah. uh and at different levels these have to be we have to keep on raising these questions and keep on reminding uh, the people that these are issues if you believe in the game you believe that the sport should grow cricket should grow then this is the way in which you have to expand fair enough i think that takes us to the end pretty much of this conversation and also out of time and all of that uh three points just to quickly conclude one for the bcci uh, women's cricket is not a different sport played on a different planet for the players <laughs> unionize and for you guys keep watching news click